Hello, everyone. So I welcome you back uh, to this video lecture on data communication. So in this uh, lecture, we will start with the physical. So this is the lecture seven. And we are discussing with physical layer, the first layer in our TCP IP protocols. What we are going to learn here, we all know that digital computer has the data as using only two numbers, right? So that is series of zeros and ones, something like this. And these zeros and ones in a computer, they are represented as a voltage levels. So it means I am going to write this as minus uh, zero volts for one. I will write it as plus five volts, plus five volts. We have zero volts and again a zero volts. So we are going to write them as a voltage levels. Now this voltage signal is what we are transferring through a medium. Some cable. So I'll not be repeating again. This medium could be wired up there. But uh, for just convenience, simplicity, I will always refer to a wire kind of medium. So when, once I send this kind of uh, signals into this cable, what will happen? Right? What will uh, what is happening inside this cable? Will I get the same waveform that is being sent? Or will I get something like this? A distorted kind of or will I get really something which is not a square wave? Why does it happen? So, in this uh, part of this physical layer of our syllabus, we are going to define some basic fund, uh, basic concepts of data communication. We are going to see what is a data, what is a signal, and we will focus on more on digital signals. So between these data signals and digital signals, we will also define what is called as a periodic signal. So some very basic concepts. Then it goes into digital signals. So there we will understand, we'll define now what is a trick. So the first uh, very important term in uh, data communications, bitrate, number of bits sent in one second. Can we achieve a better bit? And how can we do that? And when we send it through this uh, medium, through this channel, then we will start with a new kind of game. So we will try to understand in terms of so we'll apply Fourier's, uh, we will see that what is happening, and we will also define uh, the uh, channel as a Laplace. So what we are going to learn, we are going to learn data versus signal. Then we are going to define two kinds of data, two kinds of signals. Then. We will define what is periodic signal and non-periodic signal. What is the uh, objective of doing that. Then we will discuss in detail about the digital signals and introduce to something called as composite signal. Right? Then two very interesting concepts. Uh, I mean, uh, before that, we will be looking at the channel as LPF filter. So in this video, we will uh, try to uh, cover uh, these concepts and uh, 
I understand. So let us first start with what is a data, right? So in data, uh, this is uh, the information that is generated by a system. So it, two kinds of data is generated by any system. Digital. So I'm, we are taking more general. Okay? Don't relate it that uh, with the computer. It's any system. Not only just a computer or a mobile. It could be any system. So data can be a digital or a analog. The digital, which is discrete in nature, and analog is a, a continuous kind of sequence. Okay, that is the kind of data. So mic generates an analog data, so it is continuous. Whereas digital is uh, some sort of clock. And now we have what is called as a sequence, right? So here, uh, like data, we again see two kinds of signals. So we see a digital signal, and we see an analog signal. If you come to the data communication, the system is generating a digital data. Remember, it is not generating analog, only digital data. And we need to represent this data. We have an option, whether I can represent it as a digital signal or an analog signal. Since this is a digital machine, we are going to look that as a digital signal. So how does the digital, what do you mean by the digital signal? If I plot it it's with respect to time, then a digital can be viewed as a data which is represented with different voltage levels, something like this, right? In square wave kind of things. Whereas if I look at on the analog signal, it values keeps on changing for every time, okay, for every time instance. Its value will change. So that's called uh, an uh, analog signal. Right? And if you look at these signals, there are two very interesting parts of the signals periodic and non periodic. This non periodic is also known as a periodic, right? So let me show you what do you mean by a periodic signal. Okay, so I'm having some waveform like this, right? And this waveform repeats itself after every specific time period. So if you look at this time period, this is repeating. Right? So this kind of signals are called as periodic signals. So the one it repeats. So if you take the sine wave. So for this time period T, the same is going to repeat. Okay, so my, my diagram is a bit vague here. So if, if, if when I say it is a periodic, the repetition is going to happen. So if, if it is that is not true, we call it as a non -periodic. So we have a digital and analog data. Computer goes with the digital data. Digital and analog signals, computer has both. So it is, it is dealing with both the signals. Now we will define, we have defined what is called as a periodic and a non-periodic. Fine. Just keep this in your brains uh, for the digital and the analog signals. Now let us introduce this term, digital signals. Okay, so we have a digital data, so I'm converting them to digital signals, because that's how the digital machine is, uh, uh, is looking at it. 
Now, let us assume that in one second, we are having eight bits. So let me plot it so that we can understand here. So I'm taking this axis as T and this is my voltage levels. And I'm telling you that there are eight bits. So let me take this as zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, and a zero. So, Right. Let's see. I'm using two voltage valves. Let's assume that I'm using two voltage. So let us call this as level zero. And we will be having here as level one. Okay. So when I have the data zero, then my signal will be at level zero. And when it is at one, it is at level one, level one, level one, because I'm having three continuous ones, a zero, then again, level two levels, and a zero, right? So this total time period, what we have is one second. In one second, Two levels I am using, two levels to represent the data, and there are eight bits. So we define this as eight bits per second. Right? So in one second, using two levels, I am able to represent only eight bits in one second. Now, if I use a different mechanism, let me use a different mechanism. So instead of just using two levels, I will be using four levels. So let's call this as level one. I'll write it as L1, level two, level three, and level four. Since I'm having four levels, right? I cannot use one bit, right? So like, like zero, I cannot use uh, for L1 and that's not going to happen. I need uh, uh, data for each of these levels. So what I'll do is, but just by observations, we can see I need two bits, right? So let me take two bits. Instead of one bit in that given time, I'll be using two bits. Some example I will take zero, one, 0, 1, 0, 1, I'll be taking 1, 0, and having 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now, how many bits we are taking in one second? We are having 16 bits in one second. Why it happened? Because of taking this more number of levels. So, 0, 0, I will call it as level 1. 0, 1, I will call it. Level 2, level 2, level 2. 1, 0, let me map it to level 3. And 1, 1, I will map it to level 4. Again, we are having 11, 0, and 0, 1, I have to here. Right? So these are all the digital signals. Now, what we have to observe, very interesting. By putting more number of levels, I can accommodate more number of bits in one second. That is what we have. So how can I set up a relationship? So my point here is, so if I want more number of bits to be packed in a given level, so number of bits, per level. So we want to see. How can I establish this relationship? We can easily see that this can be given as log 2 of n. So n is my number of bits. 
right? Log two of n. That is a uh, number of levels. Sorry, the number of levels. So if I take an example as uh, n as eight, so I'll take the instead of instead of using okay, let let it start with n equals to what has happened? So log two of base two of four, which is two. Now if I take this as eight. How many bits we can pack? Three. We can ask, sir, let us take some uh, 128 levels. I can pick uh, so many number of bits in that, right? So that's not going to happen. So it is, uh, we'll see. But there is a chance that, so if I, if I can use more number of levels, what is happening is the bit rate. So instead of 8 bits per second, I'm having 16 bits per second. So what is a bit rate? Number of bits sent in one second. Right? So what are the other characteristics that we can look? Okay. So here, what is the length of this bit we are having? Okay. So let's see. Because you see, the length of the bit here, and when I compare here, the second scheme, it has, it has reduced. So what is the length of the bit? So let's call this as bit length. So we can easily find it. It is, okay, let me write it properly. L -E -N -G -T -H, bit length. You can easily write it as a propagation speed. Right, multiplied by bit duration. So if you compute this, so bit length is a length that it fits in a cable. So it's a very crucial parameter. If the, what is the length of the bit and uh, the length of the cable and what is the propagation speed, it will tell me how many bits I need to decide. Uh, to put it on the cable so that uh, the data can be sent. So that examples we will uh, take here. I think you, you are able to understand. It. So if I take a bit length and if I know what is the length of the cable, that will give me a, an idea that what should be the length of the frame that I should put it on, on, on a cable so that I can uh, transmit it to the other side. Fine, so let, let's talk about those uh, concepts with an example data. Okay, now let us see, uh, we are taking a, a periodic signal, okay? And we will apply Fourier transform. So let me take one example. So I'll take a periodic signal. So this is a, a periodic signal that repeats for this. This is my time period T and this it repeats. So this also give me, uh, can be taken as a one by F. Now, if I apply the Fourier, now I will apply Fourier transform. Okay, now what will happen? What is a Fourier transform? So it will give me the spectrum. What is happening here is I am seeing there is a, it gives me the frequency versus uh, the magnitude plot. So I see that the there are many frequencies in the signal of a square wave. So this is phi f. These are called as harmonics. 
So my square wave is just not a square wave. It's having multiple sine waves. Uh, those sine waves are called as harmonics. And you can uh, write a, no, you can, you can construct a square wave for many number of harmonics. You need to just pack them, add them to get a perfect square wave. So square wave is, you can construct it from sine waves, uh, what are called as harmonics. Now, what is, what is the significance of this? So we are transmitting this through a cable or a transmission medium. So it's called as a channel. Right? And if I put this uh, square wave into this channel, which is basically a low pass filter, it cannot transmit all the frequencies. It can only transmit from some frequency zero. No, it can start from frequency zero to some cutoff frequency. It's called this FC. So not all the harmonics are transmitted. Few of the only the harmonics are transmitted. Not all the harmonics. So if I'm seeing only one harmonic, I will not get a square wave. Instead, if I receive only uh, uh, a channel with uh, where it can only you know send this up to F, only F, only one harmonic, the base fundamental frequency we call it as. So what, what I mean to say, see this wire is a low pass filter. It cannot transmit all the frequencies. Imagine that it can only transmit this F, not beyond. So the signal received at the other end of the cable will not be a square wave. Instead, it is just a sine wave. Completely distorted. Very difficult. No, you cannot call this as a square wave. Now, if I use a channel with two harmonics, then what will happen? So I may get something a bit close to square. Not exactly square. If I keep on adding the harmonics, then I may get very close to the square. Of course, there will be some distortion. Right. So that is what we are going to uh, discuss in detail. Because now the channel, we can say that uh, there are two kinds of channels. Uh, one with a very smaller frequency range, which is called as a narrow band. And the other one, we can have a very large frequency band. It's called a wide band transmission. And we are sending this uh, uh, fundamental, I mean, this basic signal, uh, which is having uh, uh, between zero to some uh, F. So this, we also going to define this as base band transmission. This is a base band transmission. Right. So in the next class, I will touch upon the baseband frequencies, narrow band and wide band channels, and we will uh, do some analysis of them. Uh, we will also see the effect of harmonics. You now, what is happening and very important uh, uh, theorems uh, we are going to look. Uh, they are called as Nyquist and. Uh, uh, that will come later. So we will uh, discuss on this kind baseband, wide band, and narrow band transmission, and also with the approximations. So that's the end of this class today, of uh, this lecture. Uh, see you then.